Hi to the Mom Curious crowd. This is Daniela Rabani with a solo episode for you today. Um, before I begin, I wanted to thank you, thank you for listening. She's a singer, guys. She's a singer. Yeah, I really do want to thank you for listening. It means the world to me um, and to all of us. Um, I'm produced... I'm produced. I'm produced by my parents. <laughs> Proudly produced by my parents. Uh, this podcast is produced by my podcast parents at Hoff Studios. Laura Lucchetti is the executive uh, producer. I was going to call her the executive director. But that too, I'm being honest. Um, and uh, she lovingly nudged me toward this solo episode about my trip to Israel. I didn't initially dive into this um, episode because I was scared. And, um, well, what has fear ever done for me? Nothing. Um, I get, um, I get some hate on, um, on the interwebs and it, and it frightens me. And, um, it's ignorant hate. It's, um, it's not rooted in any, uh, reality, uh, and I'm rooted in the reality, so I'm gonna claim my reality. It's actually, um, American Jewish Heritage Month in May, and, um, I didn't know that was a thing, and how interesting that I didn't even know that was a thing. I've been sort of shoving that, um, part of my identity to the side for decades now, um, and why? 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 Because I wanted to be accepted. Um, and it's like the most primal of wants. How sweet little Daniela in her 20s and 30s <laughs> um, wanted to be accepted. It is so natural and animal and, um, and scary to uh, claim... Um, my own heritage, my own minority status, my own, you know, self in this way. Um, especially when there is a lot of hate um, in the world directed um, toward Jews. Actually, uh, there's been a astounding um, research done that, you know, uh, anti-Semitic acts have gone up, you know, a lot. Let's just say a lot. Um, seven times a day in 2021. And that is not including online bullying, which, of course, I've um, encountered. But I don't give a fuck. Do you know why? Because this is who I am and I love me. And the more I love me, the more you get to love you. And the more you love you, the easier it is to be a loving human being to your children, to your employees, to your dogs, to the air that wants to love you, <laughs> that wants to fill your body with love and life. Um, it starts with loving ourselves and every part of ourselves. And part of me is being a, an American Jew um, of Israeli descent. And so... Let me tell you about my trip to Israel. It was my first time away from my kids, uh, definitely in COVID. Um, but it was four full nights or maybe even five. And that's the longest I've ever been away from them ever. My son is five years old. So <laughs> it's a long time to not go away. I don't recommend that. But, um, but you know, I'm sure there's someone out here listening um and thinking wow I, I haven't been away from my kid and he's nine um and I keep I see you I see you and I hear you and you need not go until you want to go um I do find those early years really precious and um and as annoying as like mommy mommy can be you know they're not gonna want mommy mommy all the time and um I love those little boogers but I was invited to go um, with a group of professionals to discuss standing up for Jews online. 
uh, it's through the Tel Aviv Institute and uh, a really magnificent, um, uh, what would I call him, advocate. Um, his name is Chen Mazig, and you can find him on Instagram quite easily. He's, he's also on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter and I'm not on TikTok. Um, th- that can change, but right now, and no. He uh, bravely does stand up for Jews online on all of those platforms. And um, so they had us come to Israel. And there was this, that that deep internal wow, that truth knowing um, that I had in my gut that this was the best thing, this was the best mothering I could do this week was to go to Israel. Because in the same way that I I believe recycling and earning a living and uh, taking care of your health and having great sex with your husband and living uh, in absolute fulfillment in your career is fantastic parenting. For me as a Jew and having Jewish children, understanding what anti-Semitism is, going to Israel, our homeland, which, by the way, does not discount anyone else from, uh, you know, having it be their homeland for the record. Um, that was essential mothering for me and my children. So I went. Uh, how did you prepare to travel freely without your children, without Dan, for what I assume is the first time at least since Paz is born. These are questions from Laura Lucetti. Um, I didn't plan, you guys. I'm not a big planner. Um, I have I have some beautiful skills, but um, planning is not one of them. So the day I left on a plane, I threw some dresses. Dresses actually save me. Um, because you don't have to really accessorize a dress. A dress, a dress, is, it does the whole thing. It's the whole outfit. I threw some dresses in. I threw a little makeup in my bag. Uh, it was a very small suitcase. I didn't even have to check it. And I went with my passport. I didn't forget my passport. I've done that before. I've forgotten my passport before. I mean, I, I didn't. I didn't this time. And I went on a plane for hours and hours like a 10 hour uh, plane ride I forgot how long it is and how uncomfortable it is man I would like to be rich so that I can like you know take plane rides in first class amen amen um but nonetheless it was fine and I didn't sleep at all but as we've discussed I barely sleep anyway so fine were you concerned at all about your safety as the country does unfortunately experience a lot of terrorism. You know, sadly, I was concerned about my safety and I sort of kept it to myself. My family has been in terrorist attacks, which was very life changing for both the family member um, and and the rest of us. And um, that was scarring. So but I, I just didn't mention it while I was there because I didn't want to scare anyone else and they seemed fine um we really had a great time in Tel Aviv especially on Purim which is this like really beautiful holiday what's really cool is that you know it's a holiday where you dress up it's similar to Halloween and you 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 drink and you dress up and it's like really joyous and Tel Aviv is you know uh notoriously secular and so just like on the main drag and all over, there was just party after party after party spilling out into the streets, joy after joy after joy. And I, I did unfortunately feel a little afraid, but I was like, if I'm going to die, let it be now. Um, and, uh, and I didn't die. And it was absolutely glorious. There were Jews from all over the world and, of course, from Israel and like, you know, just... Uh, joyously dancing and uh just just loving each other and then you know there's like you know Megillah reading which is essentially like a a holy script that um is a sort of requirement to read on Purim these very religious kids were you know reading it for 
the masses so that we could get the mitzvah. And I just thought, wow. I just thought, wow, this is the Jewish state, you know? Like, I guess people don't really understand that, that like we take off on Sundays here in the United States because it's a Christian country. And in Israel, the whole country spills out into the streets on Purim. And there's there are young kids reading from the Holy Scripture for our benefit. Um, you know, there, it, just fun fact, like Sunday is a regular day in Israel. Saturday, they take off Saturday because according to the Jewish sort of tradition, the Sabbath is on Saturday. So, um, so yeah, it was a, it was a profoundly, so it was a profound experience. It was a profound spiritual experience. The last time I had been to Israel was with my family. Oh, actually the last time I went to Israel was with Dan, who is my family, um, my husband. And, um, I visited with, you know, my family who lives there. And this was the first time that I ever went on my own with a group of essentially strangers um, and felt so at home. Deeply. Deeply. I felt so close to the other participants who cared so deeply for humanity. The people who spoke to us um, at the seminar were politicians and activists. There was a mother of a fallen soldier who uh, speaks internationally with um, a Palestinian man who also lost his daughter to the conflict. And they spoke in tandem together about creating peace, about hearing each other's stories. It was gut-wrenching. Gut-wrenching. And the days were long, and the food was very good. Food is very good in Israel. And the people were friendly, like so friendly. <laughs> so loving that trip changed me deeply and when I came home my children were so happy to reunite with me and there's this concept where we have to trust our kids that they can Bear the separation and trust that we'll come back. And bear the separation and trust that we'll come back. And even at some point, not bear it, but enjoy it. And that when I'm filled up, and this was me filling up a part of me that I didn't even know had run dry. On travel, on being alone. Um, <laughs> and I wasn't alone. I was with other people. But being sort of in a hotel room alone. Uh, on on contributing to society. It was an adult experience. Um, it was it was meaningful on every level, every single level, and coming home to my kids, having been filled that way, gave them an opportunity to love all of me, to see me in a way they don't get to see me all the time when I'm in the trenches with them, when I'm in the, you know, bedtime routine with them, etc. I really felt that that bonding, that attachment strengthen when I came home. Does it stir up any pangs of pain <laughs> when when I go to Israel, Laura? Okay. Uh, yeah, I cried the whole time. Um, and that's, you know, partially because of my own family history. You know, uh, my father was in the Yom Kippur War and uh, lost family members. And, um, you know, it wasn't, let's just say it wasn't great. Let's just say that it, war is very bad. The war is very bad and PTSD is very real. 
Um, and, and it's part of the reason why I um, parent the way I do and why I talk about parenting in the way that I do because I had the experience of being parented by someone who had been through war and uh, it, it's 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 no fun it's it's no fun to uh to feel that type of pain from someone you love so much and so i uh i i sort of broke i'm breaking those those painful chains every day by filling myself up with joy with meaning with fulfillment with community um and offering that to my children that that's a luxury that my parents didn't quite have it's a luxury to think about myself deeply and um without without being selfish um so that my children don't have to even consider their safety their happiness etc i get to go to seminars talking about anti-Semitism. My father went to war. My grandparents were in the Holocaust and fled Iran. Um, I get to talk. I get discourse. And when I get afraid of online bullying or even anti-Semitic attacks, um, <clears throat> we've come a long way. And I hope and pray that my children uh, move even closer in the direction of oneness and in peace, as Paz's name is peace. And yeah, this is me doing my part. This is me doing my part. This podcast is me doing my part, you know, um, offering, offering the community a look into not just my parenting experience, but many others. The oneness. We are together in this. In the same way that that mother of the fallen soldier and the father of a young Palestinian girl who lost her life to the conflict were together in their grief. Lucky us! We are together in our day-to-day -day struggles, in our, um, in, our, in our big struggles, and in our joys. We are together in this. And um, I had that sense in Israel. There was a feeling of togetherness for sure. There were pangs of, of pain. That's, that's, that's real. But when I heard from these advocates... They took that pain, some in the Hasidic community um, in Israel, some fighting for LGBTQ plus rights, um, where it's an absolute beacon of hope in Tel Aviv, um, those fighting for women's rights, those fighting for Palestinian rights. What I found was that they took their pain and they used it as fuel to make change. We can take our pain and we can and sometimes must wallow in it, sure. But man, can it connect us if we let it to others? Can it give us purpose? in this life meaning and I've told you before that I've had my bouts with depression and the one thing that has always 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 literally always grabbed me out of those dark moments was purpose so thank you for asking if it stirs up pangs of pain because it does and it also provides purpose. And pride. I had so much pride being in Israel. It's a real 
country of innovators, of people who are not looking away from the problems in this world. They see them and they work towards change. It is a truly progressive society working towards progress. I started this podcast talking about courage, the courage I am embodying to talk about my um, experience here as a mother and as a Jewish person, the daughter of Israelis, in the month of American Jewish heritage, which, like, who knew that was a month? Um, not me. And I wanted to honor that in myself and in you. Every single day that we build a life and a world that is more and more and more to our liking and to our pleasure, it takes so much courage. It takes so much courage to parent with purpose or to not parent, to decide that that is not my purpose. So I'm just like raising a glass. It's 1130 in the morning here, so it's coffee. It's a glass of coffee. And I'm raising it to you and to me. And if you could... Send me some suggestions of other places I should go in the world. I'm open to it. I want to travel more. Dan and I have a um, an anniversary trip planned. We're going to go to Fire Island for two days. Um, baby steps, you guys. Baby steps. It's going to be the first time we've ever been away from Paz. Um, and I'm very, very excited about it. Okay, sending you a lot of love. I'm always happy to answer questions. Best way to contact me is on Instagram at Daniela Rabani. Um, that's also the page for Mom Curious. So at Daniela Rabani. Um, and I'll see you next Tuesday. I won't see you, but you'll hear me. And um, I'd love to hear from you next Tuesday uh, for another episode of the Mom Curious podcast available wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to rate and subscribe.